guys, it's T here from Teeny Daily, and today we're going to be showing you how to do a spiral tie-dye and a spider tie-dye. So this first one right here is the spiral method, and I took the inside of the shirt, pinched it real tight, and then started to spiral it. And then I just let the rest of the shirt go where it will follow that spiral method. And as you see here, I'm making tiny little spirals with the little sleeves that poke out. Now, the cool thing about this method is, especially with the rubber bands or string, the messier, the better, you guys. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about making any specific pattern with the rubber band or string, which is awesome. So that was how we wrap up the spiral method. And now we're going to do the spider method and then we'll go ahead and tie dye both. First, we're going to go ahead and fold the t-shirt like so making sure that it's completely even and nice and flush, 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 flush. Then you're gonna want to go right across from the armpit like this right here. That way you know that the design is gonna be in the center of your chest. Pinch and go down. Keep that pinch nice and tight. And then you wanna swing the bottom of the shirt up and around the spiral and the top of the shirt down and around the spiral. See how they come together. And then don't be afraid to make other little spirals or wrap them in as you see there, cause you want this to be as tight as possible, you guys. <laughs> really, really tight. I can't stress that enough because if it's not tight, you won't get that beautiful white effect in there and the dyes will bleed. I'm gonna ro roll it and then fold it again right on top of the other rubber band. We're gonna do one over top of each other. You can also do this with string if you'd like but the trick to making these lines so nice and tight is making sure that the rubber bands are right on top of each other and making sure that the shirt stays nice and tight together. That's the trick here. For this one, we wanna do one side red and one side blue. Make sure you shake it up real nice. Oh, that's pretty. I did add a little bit of black to it so I could darken it up because I wanted it to be a darker red. So you can go ahead and place this in a Ziploc bag or just leave it on a rack to dry for a few hours. I would just recommend putting the blue side down since it is the darker side and you don't want it bleeding onto the red. All right guys, and so now we're on our spiral. As you guys see, it looks like a murder scene of red and blue, blah, 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 blah. But it is not. So let me row you guys in a little bit. So I have a dark, 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 dark blue and a more dark navy, royal blue i would say for this one so we're just gonna add some more here oh look at that that's pretty oh look at this red so this is also a red i made it is red mixed with hot pink and a little bit of orange it's like a rose red look at that cherry red oh it makes me so excited Oh, that looks cool. And on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Trying to keep it, you know, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, etc. And then we're gonna let it sit for a few hours. So putting some cold water on and taking off the bands as we rinse it. Look at it, you guys. Ah! 
All right, we want to rinse it till all the dye comes out and then we are going to wash it in a cold wash cycle in my washer. This one is the spiral. We're gonna put on some cold water. Again, I like to do cold water. It helps the colors not blend and bleed. Wow, 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 look at that. Look at that. All right, so again, I'm gonna rinse all the dye, keep rinsing until all the dye is out and the water runs clear, and then we're gonna put it on a cold rinse or wash cycle in my washer. This is the spiral method. Let me zoom you guys out so you can see. I am very much obsessed with how this one came out. I love that it, the cherry color, remember how we did more of a cherry pink than a vintage pink? Look at those vibrant colors. So stinking cute. And then this one is the spider effect. Look at how cool. See how I was telling you, when you fold it, if you want it to be in the center, look at that. Look at that spider it made. And its body's right there in the center. And then look at the bottom. The bottom came out so cool. It's like an ombre mixture happening here. And I love that we use darker. Adding some black to each of these made it look more vintage. I added a little bit of black to the blue and did two different shades of blue and then added orange to the red and then two different shades. I love it. Now it's time for the vinyl. All right, so we have the Cricut doing its thing. This skull design with a bow that's gonna be red, white, and blue. Very patriotic, so that's what it just finished printing out. Alrighty, so I cut around it. I also did it in black because I wanted the black outlines. See how cool that is? Really quick mental note that make sure when you're doing iron-ons, you're flipping the image one and then the shiny side or the plastic side, the covering side, goes down on the Cricut map because this is the side that's going to be ironing on. Okay. All right, we're gonna be using my heat press over here. I like this a little bit more for vinyl since we're doing several layers. This heat press over here is one I do for more transfers. So I'm gonna use this, and then we're also gonna heat it this. This is my little tiny press, I love this one. This is for the smaller uh, vinyl pieces. First off, I like to put a mat Always double check that you have the front of the shirt. There's the tag. Let's put a mat in between the layers. All right, make sure it's nice and smooth and even. We're gonna go in with our skeleton first. I wanna make sure it's nice and even. Oh, I like that. Cause I want the bow to have some white showing through. Oh, that looks so cool right there. Okay, sweet. Now we're gonna place our Teflon over that. Place it down and 30 seconds. All right, it's all done. Oh, look at that. I let it cool down. This is a cold peel. I like it to, to peel cold, so let's give it a about a minute or two. And in, peel it. Oh, 
That looks cool. So it is gonna need a little bit more time. I only do it for 30 seconds because I know it's gonna need more time. Now we're gonna place down these pieces. Right there. going to take some Teflon and we're going to put it right over this just like that so I know where I'm ironing. Take our little iron. This is very, very hot and I'm just going to keep moving it for about 20 seconds. Look at that. It comes off so nice. Yoink. And yoink. Oh, look at how pretty that looks. All right, now that I like where everything else is placed, I'm gonna put down the Teflon one more time. We're gonna go ahead and do this one by hand. Now, I like to get in and go over everything. This All right, guys, so we're gonna add some glitter to our sleeves on this shirt that we did right here. And I wanna show you guys what I'm doing. We're using a heat and glue method. So first I put parchment paper in between the sleeves cause you don't want to get them stuck. You gotta, gotta move quickly cause this stuff does dry fairly fast. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on the sleeve but you don't want too much in one area because it will show up overly yellow and I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle some glitter. Let's go in with some blue, go in with some red, do, 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 do. work fast, work fast, and some sparkly, sparkly stars. And last but not least, we need some silver. Okay, now we're gonna just whoosh it over here and whoosh it over there and make sure it got everywhere on the sleeve. And it's okay if it gets on your mat. I like it, I like it a lot. Now let's take the parchment paper, put it over the sleeve, move all this stuff out of the way. We're gonna take our mini Cricut heater over here and apply some heat. I'm just going in circular motions. This is at 375, but I'm moving fairly quickly, not staying in one spot too long because I don't want the glue to burn. It'll make it yellow. Okay. And then check it out. Voila, you have a glitter sleeve. All right. So for the spider shirt, I decided I wanted to have a glitter, silver glitter background. Look at how freaking cool that is, right? Okay, so first, we have it cut out in the silver. And I just decided to leave the whole thing. I started plucking it out, but then I realized you don't really need to do that. Make sure the shirt is centered and the mat is in between the shirts and we're gonna have it curved like this right about here yeah I like that and we're doing that at 325 for 30 seconds look how good that looks you guys yes okay so now you see my thought process now we line this one up very, very nicely, perfectly. Uh oh, we have a runaway here. Let's line it up. Now for again, for these little pieces, we're gonna do this one first instead of the red stripes this time. Let's change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Make sure I like the placement there. Perfecto. And now we're gonna use the little, little Cricut tool. And I'm gonna hold it for about 
20 seconds. But always make sure it stays moving because this is very hot. All right, you guys, check it out. I am beyond excited. Did all this. The tie dye for one came out amazing. This was a spiral technique. This one is B's shirt. You got some glitter and sparkles, and this one is mine. This is called the spider. Look at how you have the effect here. And then it has an ombre. Straight firework line ombre at the bottom. I love it. I love it so much. So sparkly. All right, folks. So that's everything. I truly hope these tutorials were helpful. Here's some pics of me and B wearing our shirts on 4th of July. Do something that makes you a smile today, you guys. Y'all stay wonderful and have a gorgeous day. Bye, guys.